My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on this show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey everybody, if you've been around real estate for any time, you've definitely heard about short-term rentals, Airbnb, Verbos, all this kind of good stuff. You've also probably heard that there are some challenges, a little bit of hiccups with this whole investing strategy, especially now that certain areas are kind of clamping down and I think hotels are getting ticked off about losing business to short-term rentals. However, there are still some massive opportunities and today's special guest is a very experienced short-term rental investor. Uh, he teaches and coaches people about this and he's got a unique way of doing short-term rentals. It's kind of it's oversized and it gets some oversized returns as well. So Karan Narang, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, appreciate you having me on this uh, on this show. My pleasure. All right. So we were talking a little bit before we started recording that you do things quite differently with your short-term rental property. So maybe give us a big picture overview of what do your properties look like? What are you doing differently than other short-term rental hosts? Yeah, so uh, Dave, just like everyone else, you know, I started off in short-term rentals with regular, you know, buying a beach house or buying a cabin, and and you know, while those are doing pretty well, yeah. uh, these days what's happened is because of uh, increased inventory, people clamping down on on these sh regular short-term rentals, um, prices are going you know lower and lower every single day. It's reduced our profitability, so we've now pivoted. We've changed our approach almost entirely. And we're getting out of the regular short-term rentals and moving towards larger lifestyle type of properties, typically on large acreage, can sleep anywhere, you know, north of 20 people, up to 26, 30 people. Wow. Uh, sometimes we'll buy multiple properties together so we can sleep 50 people, you know, kind of together. And, and what we do differently is, uh, unlike the mindset that most people have, which is, hey, we can't have a bachelor party, bachelor party or a wedding or something like this on site, um, we actually encourage people because this... People are on the lookout for renting out short-term rentals. We, people are on the lookout for renting out uh, vacation rentals to go out and have a wedding, a micro wedding, a small size wedding, you know, 60, 70 people, uh, mm -hmm. unlike a full-blown wedding venue, uh, you know, people are, people are uh, looking forward to these, uh, these type of venues. So we, we try to provide people with the space where they can get together with, you know, 25 people, 26 people, have a little wedding on site, uh, have day guests come in, you know, 60, 70 guests come in and it kind of, you know, that's that's how we do things differently. So we're trying to fill this gap that a lot of short-term rental uh, owners are missing out on. Very, very interesting. So Karan, what, what would be the difference between these kind of properties and let's say a boutique hotel? Uh, the difference between these kind of properties and a boutique hotel, when you talk about a boutique hotel, uh, you have multiple units in the same space. You've got a place for people to stay, but a boutique hotel, usually uh, they don't have the spaces required for these gatherings. And people don't want to be in a motel or a hotel kind of a setup when they're trying to bring family and friends together. So for us, what happens is, uh, you know, we actually rent out the entire property to basically one guest. You know, our flagship property is actually Sleeps 26, is on 10 acres, Feels like a regular STR or short-term rental, but it allows multiple people to get together, a large family, multi-generational family get together. So you've got absolutely gorgeous space for people to have a wedding, beautiful backdrop of Texas Hill Country. And at the same time, they've got this nice pool they can all hang out at. They've got all the facilities needed, the comforts of home, while making sure you've got a space that can also be a wedding venue and can host multiple people. So it's a little different in concept. Yeah. A boutique hotel, you may have other people in the rooms nearby. At our property, you're basically renting out the entire compound, if you want to call it that. So maybe paint a picture for me of what these kind of properties look like. Like what, what kind of property are you buying and converting into this massive, <laughs> you know, fit, sleep 26 people type of thing? Yeah, so ideally what I'm looking for is properties that are larger, you know, north of, you know, six or seven bedrooms, um, you know, so we'll have properties that have, you know, between six and eight bedrooms at the moment, and we're going bigger and bigger every day. 
uh, they're typically on larger acreage. You know, when you're having weddings and events, you don't want your neighbors to be right next door because they're going to be, you know, you're going to hear from them for sure. Yeah. When the wedding party has a DJ going at 1030 at night, you're going to hear from your neighbors and you don't want that. So I'm looking for larger acreage where, you know, uh, it's a very secluded experience. Um, as many people as I can sleep, if I can, you know, get a 10 bedroom home, that's better than a six bedroom home. Mm -hmm. uh, because the more people, people love the economies of scale of having the families there, the friends there with them versus telling all their friends and family, hey, I rented out this wedding venue and yeah, you, you're in charge of going and figuring out where to stay and a hotel nearby and all that stuff. What if you could reach out to your friends and family and say, listen, I rented out this whole compound and you guys are welcome to come stay because we can have 40 people stay there or 30 people stay there. So that's uh, our criteria is larger property and large acreage ideally has a view or something special going for it. You know, acreage, view, trails, nature, um, a fantastic swimming pool is an absolute must. So we're kind of looking for those properties. That makes a lot of sense. Now, wouldn't this be a, an extremely seasonal kind of a thing? Like, uh, you know, I'm just thinking, okay, weddings, there's a few months that are, that's wedding season. Obviously you're booking out for weekends. What, what about the rest of the time? How do you infill all those vacancies? Yes. Yeah, so, so we got weddings. Weddings are seasonal, but you'd be surprised. The only times we don't have weddings is like in the peak of the summer when, you know, and I'm down in Texas Hill Country outside of Austin is where our properties are. Mm -hmm. um, the only time we don't get weddings is, you know, uh, August, you know, mid August when it's 110 degrees outside. Uh, however, because we're in the Texas Hill Country, it's still not bad. It's dry season. Um, so we, you know, we're pretty occupied all year, right? Wow. Um, now, not all of it is weddings. So when we don't have weddings, we've got family get togethers, reunions. Uh, in December, we got an inquiry today that said, hey, we want to have a corporate retreat. So we do retreats. We go, we do executive retreats, corporate retreats, yoga retreats because of the view and beautiful people love doing that. Yeah. Um, just family reunions, friends getting together. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do there. Essentially, when people just want to get together and hang out and it kind of becomes the destination for them, mm -hmm. you're welcome to come and stay there. That's that's the kind of approach we take. So how do you market these properties differently than you did your regular Airbnbs before? So you'd be really surprised. Um, you know, we still get a lot of inquiries from Airbnb, uh, but normally what happens is these inquiries come in from Airbnb. Most of them want to absolutely come in. You know, if it's a wedding, they want to tour the property because, you know, you're not going to get married at a place you've never seen before. Right. Uh, many times these will then get converted into direct bookings once they come and see and tour the property or whatever. Saves the guests some money, saves us some money, and it's a win-win for everyone. So it markets pretty well. Uh, actually, if you go, you know, look up our Airbnb listings, it look glorious. We call it right out there. We say weddings and uh, events, and, and it's okay. We get a lot of leads from there. Uh, now, we also have implemented our own uh, marketing system internally, where we are marketing, heavily marketing our, our direct booking website. Now, we get a lot of leads from third-party sources for people looking for wedding venues, and we have a whole marketing system and a, you know, a sales funnel that we put them through there. Very, very interesting, Karan. So you've worked with other people, helping them kind of make this pivot. I can see this working really well in places like California and Texas and Florida and, you know, kind of four season type places. What about other areas? Are there are there some places where this this whole idea just really doesn't make sense? Yeah, you know, I typically stay away from the really seasonal markets, you know, like the Northeast, for example, you know, you've got the summer, but then the rest of the year, you can't do most of this unless you have an indoor venue. Um, we don't have an indoor venue, we don't have a barn or, a, you know, some sort of a shed or something like that, where you can do indoor venues. Um, so we try to stay away from it. We like where, you know, we've got at least a nine month kind of decent weather, good weather um situation so northeast for me is a no-go uh chicago michigan these states where it's a little or a lot more colder than here is a no-go people can deal with the heat um they can't deal with the uh deal with the with the cold weather for the weddings yeah i know that that makes sense i'm thinking it's, i'm up here in canada i'm thinking it might be a little bit limited in some parts of canada that's for sure yeah. although you'd be surprised there i was talking with one one person that's uh 
gotten into this whole Nordic spa thing. So if you did some sort of a combination where you've got a Nordic feel for the cold season with yeah. saunas and hot tubs and, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that'd be spectacular. Yeah, yeah. you know, if, if you provide a little indoor space for the wedding itself and then you have all this other stuff going on, yeah, it could be a winner. And I think, you know, you're hitting upon a really important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's looking at short term rentals and hey, vacation rentals, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do this. But if you're in today's market, if all you're doing is the normal stuff, very hard to make money. Mm -hmm. If you can think outside the box, just like you mentioned, hey, can you know, if it's in the colder weather, maybe you can do, you know, multiple heated pools with different themes, you can do, you know, spas and saunas and things like that. And, you know, Nordic theme. Yeah, if as long as you're willing to think outside the box and really think about how you're going to position yourself in the market differently, differentiate yourself from the crowd, you have an opportunity to win. Yeah, no, it's that's fascinating. So just what what are the typical bookings in these kind of large wedding type things? Is it like three days, five days? How long are they typically booking the whole thing out for? So our minimum, uh, if you're going to do a wedding, is we typically require a two-day minimum. Mm, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we basically give them a package. You know, it's a two-night stay, one-night, one-day event. So the people who are staying at the property, 26 people, stay for two nights. Uh, you've got up to 65 day guests who come in. And we throw in things like, you know, tables and chairs are provided. You know, we've got nice white tables and chairs that we give them as a value add on top because they're not cheap to rent. You know, again, when you're renting it, it's still expensive. They count it, you know, by the day and it's not cheap. Yeah. And uh, so we throw that in as a value add uh, and we give them a backdrop. You know, we've got these two triangles, you know, like huge metal triangles that we got custom built um, that act as a really pretty backdrop. Um, and replicates, you know, it's our brand, you know, two triangles is like adventure awaits. That's our brand. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, our typical wedding for us is two nights, one day, um, and costs somewhere between eight and $10,000. Well, you know, all things considered for a wedding, that isn't too, too bad. Now, yeah. now just out of curiosity, what do people typically do for catering and entertainment and all that kind of stuff? Do you hook them up with that or they, they kind of do their own thing? Absolutely. You know, good question there. So unlike typical wedding venues who have only a certain list of vendors you can pick from, uh, which actually unfortunately ends up costing these, you know, um, couples a lot of money because you can only pick from those four and they all have their prices marked up because they're giving the wedding venue a little bit of a kickback there. We actually, all we do is we give them a list of recommended vendors that have come before, know the property before and have seen it before. Yeah. But they're free to pick whoever they want, as long as those vendors are, are insured, you know, we don't care. Because, you know, we understand that someone who's trying to come and have a wedding at an Airbnb versus booking out a big wedding venue would like to save some money. And we want to give them maximum value. And if they can save money on a photographer or save money on catering, more power to them. So we allow them to make those choices. Yeah, but you provide them with some you lead them in certain directions or you provide them options so they don't have to start from scratch themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. We give them a, we give them a list they can go by and we give them things like, you know, wedding planning checklists and things like that. And, you know, they can go and go to town with it. Uh, we don't have any affiliations with these third parties. So it's not like we're getting a kickback from any of it. So we're just trying to give them names to help them out. And I think they like that experience a lot. No, that makes a lot of sense. So it sounds very, very positive. Karan, what, what have been some of your, learning experiences or some of the the not so great no, nothing's ever 100 percent positive so what are some of the things to keep in in mind with so these kind of the first one we already touched upon a little bit the whole noise thing so the property we have you know for example our flagship one is on 10 acres but the neighbor it's kind of a long kind of a lot so the neighbor is close and every once in a while we'll get a you know a message or a call or whatever saying hey it's too loud it's too late whatever uh, and we'll have to deal with it. Um, that's one. So the noise thing has been one uh, where it's an event. And, you know, we don't feel like telling them, hey, shut it down. But yeah. we do give them good time. Hey, 10 p.m., 1030, you know, you got to shut it down, get it low. And you can still have a good time, but don't just blast off the music. Yeah. Um, that's one. The second learning that we've had is, you know, the amount of trash that these events generate is yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> we didn't even think about it, right? We didn't even think of the logistics around it. 
and and the way we're situated our regular trash pickup company can't bring their big trucks and have a dumpster there so all kinds of complications with logistical issues so um you know that that kind of showed us that we need to have the right team on the ground to actually execute on these events you know that becomes absolutely critical uh, if you don't have the right team on the ground to help you out with this you're in trouble so now Karan, are you usually with these properties are you purchasing them outright or are you leasing them or or what does that typically look like no we're typically purchasing them they're leveraged so we're using uh financing on these deals mm -hmm. um my ideal deal is typically something that i can buy and renovate so i'm adding real value to the property itself yeah. and um you know so to me it's financing you know we're buying these properties now we're getting into more uh joint venture deals you know we've got other people who are reaching out to us saying I'd like to get into the space. I want to sell my regular short-term rental and I want to get into the space. And, uh, you know, we don't want to do anything because it's a lot of work, don't get me wrong, to run this and to do this and to give tours. Uh, you know, it's a lot of work. Uh, we'll finance the deals. We want you to go find it and go do this. So that's that's how we're we're now expanding our, uh, our entire portfolio. No, that's exciting stuff. Well, hey, Karan, thank you very much for sharing your experience and your unique twist on short-term rentals. If people want to find out more and connect with you, where should they go? So obviously Facebook is a good place, but uh, you can look us up on vacationrentalmastery.com. And uh, honestly, if you want some free resources, go to vacationrentalmastery.com slash ebook. Uh, we published an, a free ebook for anyone looking to get into vacation rentals. It's a good way for your listeners to get some free resources, get a lot of value from it, and be able to go and try to get started with it. Very good. All right. Well, keep up the good work and thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Really happy uh, to be here. All right, everybody. Take care and see you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at moneypartnerformula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.